Yo, what is up guys? It is Darthline back here with another video for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at my top 20 tips for beginners. But before we get straight into the video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support I've been getting recently. It's been great. I now have 1800 subscribers and I'm getting 1000 views a day. So thank you guys so much for that. If you want to support this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you want to support my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much. Let's get straight into the video. So the first tip I have for you guys is using your adventurer's guide to find ascension materials. So if you guys don't know, characters have to be leveled up and then they can level up to a certain extent and then they need materials to level on past that. So if we take a look at Jean here, Jean's level 50. Now I can't ascend her right now because my adventure rank isn't high enough. But what I can do is I can collect the ascension materials to get her to that point once I do reach adventure rank 30. So how you'd use the adventurer's handbook to find your ascension materials is you can click on the actual material on console. There's a way to navigate over to it and then it'll give you some options on how to find that. So right here, we can see that it's dropped by level 40 plus Churchill's and other things. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and it'll bring you to the actual page where you can find Churchill's. We're just going to click on navigate and there we go. Now we can navigate to the closest Churchill. And if we go over here, there is some. So we can just go ahead and get those masks. Okay, so for sucrose, we need um, shimmering nectar from whopper flowers. So let's go find a whopper flower. So here's our whopper flower, and then we're just going to go ahead and travel over there. Umbrella warfare, I guess. Okay, and there is our whopper flower nectar. So that's how you use your adventurer's handbook to find ascension materials. So the next tip I have for you guys is leveling up your character's talents. Now you might not exactly know what I'm talking about and it's kind of embarrassing, but I have just found out about this as well. Go to your character screen and click talents. Now I thought that these level up with your character level, but if you're thinking the same thing, you'd be wrong. So. You can actually level these up and they do level up the skill attributes as well. So if I want to level up Navia's normal attack, I'll have to level up with certain materials, just like Ascension materials. So you can use the Adventure Handbook for this as well. But since I don't have those, I do have some for Jean. So for Jean, her normal attack, I have materials here and I can level up her talent from level one to level two. So that's going to level up their percentage of attack that she does on normal hits. So if your characters feel like they're lacking a little bit, maybe it's time to level up their talents. The next tip I have for you guys is always doing your daily commissions. It's basically just free primo gems for minimal work. So there's no real reason why you shouldn't be doing it. And as a beginner, you want to get as many characters as possible. So getting all the primo gems you can as possible is going to be in your advantage. So most of the time, there's something super simple and you get quite a good reward for it, especially if you do all of four and then collect your commission from the Adventurers Guild. The next tip I have for you guys is collecting your wishes when you ascend characters. Now you might not know this, but every other time you ascend a character, you get a wish. So to collect your wish, find your character with an exclamation point in the top right. If this has an exclamation point on it as well, you'll definitely know you have one. Go ahead and click this button. On consoles, I believe it's down on the right joystick. Go ahead and click the ascension that has a exclamation point on it and click claim. And that's how you get your wish. The fifth tip I have for you guys is using your Wanderer's Advice, Adventurer's Experience, and Hero's Wit instead of using the character's experience you get from around the world. So most of you will probably know this. You can go to level up and then use your Hero's Wit, Adventure's Experience, and Wanderer's Advice that you've gotten from different challenges around the world, whether that be defeating a boss, 
doing storyline missions, or doing ley lines. I have a whole video on how to farm these. If you want to go ahead and watch that, just go ahead and go to my channel. Other than that, let's get to the next tip. Tip number six is keeping ascension materials that you need in the back of your head. And what I mean by that is, once you get up to a certain character level, and you're not the right adventurer level yet, you cannot ascend your characters anymore. So as you can see, I have Navia, but I don't have the correct amount of ascension materials to go ahead and level her up once I do hit adventure rank 30. While I'm playing, I might want to keep an eye out for these ascension materials so I can collect them, so that way once I'm adventure rank 30, I can automatically level her up. So when you first start playing the game, you might want to stick with just one character, and it might be your favorite character. It might actually be more advantageous to go ahead and get more characters in your party, or use other characters more. Learn your elemental combos. If you use a special, it'll apply an element to your enemy, and then you can switch characters and apply another element to that enemy to cause an elemental reaction. So as you can see here, Electro and Hydro, you get Electro Chart. And you can actually go into your tutorials and see all the different reactions that you can make. Like here, Pyro and Electro make it Overloaded, which can be a very powerful elemental reaction. Learning these and not sticking with one character will be very advantageous for you in the beginning. Tip number eight is learning how to dodge and then keeping a healer in your party. This game does actually have a built-in dodge mechanic, but you can dodge by sprinting in either direction when you're in combat. So if I get these guys wanting to hate me, I can go ahead and just dodge their attacks and learn when they're going to attack. It's pretty simple. The second part of this tip is using a healer. So Jean is the healer in my party. And the reason why this is important, especially in the early game, is you can only rely on food so much until you don't have food again. So this way you don't have to go back to the fireplace or the cook station or wherever you use to get food. And you can just damage enemies and reheal your team. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets Barbara as their first healer, and she gets her healing ability from her max HP. So it'd be very wise to level up those artifacts so that you can get her max HP up there. So whenever you use her healing ability, she can heal your whole team much quicker. Tip number nine kind of contradicts with tip number eight, and it's don't forget about food and don't underestimate it. Because once you have a character that is a healer in your party, you're not really going to need food. That might be a mistake, because a lot of food doesn't just heal your characters. It also gives you certain other abilities. For instance, the Bountiful Year gives you an increased attack by 272 and a higher crit rate of 8% for 300 seconds. Some of these even stack. So whenever you have a chance, I would cook some food for your party, especially if you're going up against harder bosses. Another thing about food is if one of your characters die, typically your healer cannot revive them. But that's where food comes into play. So if you look at this little icon here, this means that this revives your character and certain, certain foods will restore more health than others. For instance, this charcoal baked, I'm not going to pronounce that, restores more health Another thing about cooking is once you've cooked enough, you get a proficiency, and that means you can auto-cook these things so you don't have to click the sweet spot every time. You can just click four of them, and depending on what character you use, you can actually get more of that dish you're cooking. So Jean and Barbara, for this specific dish, will have a 12% chance to double the product. So just again, don't forget about the food. It will help you all a lot in later game. Tip number 10 is using the interactive map to map out all your Octuli and then mark off which ones you have. Ohoyo Lab actually has a interactive map that you can use. I'll go ahead and leave the link down in the description. You can choose which Oculi you want on this map. And once you find one, you can click it and then mark pin. So once you click off of it, it'll hide it but it'll be a little bit opaque. So that way you know which oculi you have. The more oculi you have, the higher level you can make your statues of the seven, which then give you stamina in return. This is actually a really great overall tool because you have all these other things that you can click 
and see where they're at on the map. For instance, let's say that you want precious tests and you can map each one and mark it and then you can go on to the next one. Tip number 11 is using shops to your advantage. So for instance, say you don't want to go ahead and collect a bunch of food and you need to make some dishes really quick for an upcoming battle or boss, you can go up to one of the shops and you can buy almost all the food you can think of. Now most of the time the food they're going to be selling is local to the area. So Leeway is going to have different food than Mondstadt and so on and so forth. Another shop you might be interested in looking at is the souvenir shop. Sometimes they'll have rare items that you use with a different currency. For instance, this Northlander sword billet. Or if you need ascension materials, you can most of the time find ascension materials at souvenir shops. So it's just a good place to go if sometimes you're in a rush and you need to ascend a character or maybe even a weapon. Unlocking waypoints early in the game will especially help you during story missions where stories are spread out all through Tavat. You can get to daily commissions faster, different cities faster, and also farm ascension materials much quicker. Also to add that waypoints give you five primo gems per waypoint you unlock, so that's also very helpful. Domains also act as a waypoint, so you can actually teleport to them. So this is a great tool to have in the back of your pocket when you're first starting out the game. Tip number 13 is using your character's passive talents to your own advantage. So for instance, Sucrose can craft things and when she's making a weapon enhancement material, she has a 10% chance to double the product. When Jean is cooking something, she has a 12% chance of doubling that product. Now, not every character has a passive talent that only relates to making things. So Rosaria at night, all party characters have a increased speed of 10%. Or if you go to Beto, Beto has a 20% decrease in stamina for the entire party. So if you stack those two things together, you have a party that uses 20% less stamina and is 10% quicker. Number 14 is refining multiples of weapons. Every character has their own weapon type. This Bane of Storm and Tide increases the damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Electro by 20%. So if we go ahead and enhance this and then go to refine, we can refine up to rank two, which instead of increasing damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Electro by 20% is now 24%. But what you need to do to do that is you need to have a multiple of that weapon. So now I have three, including the one that Beto's holding. So I'm going to take one of those and refine it into the one that she's holding. And now it does damage to 24%. So if your character's lacking a little bit of damage, this will definitely help. Now, number 15 is never leave the game without using all of your resin. So if you go to your adventure map, you can see here at the top right how much resin you have. This regenerates over time unless you want to use other things to refill it. If you want to upgrade sucrose here, you need some hurricane seeds. There is a boss called the Animo Hypothesis. It will give you some hurricane seeds if you defeat it, but you need to use 40 resin. The reason why I say use all of your resin before you leave the game is because you're going to be missing out on all that opportunity to use all of your resin and then have it recharge while you're away from the game. Tip number 16 is pick up everything you see. You never know when something you might pick up will help you later in the game or might even help you ascend different characters that you'll get. And don't worry about your inventory capacity because you have quite a lot and it doesn't go by how much of that certain thing you have, but how many different items you have in total. This also becomes very helpful when you're trying to level up some artifacts. I have some three stars and these are just things I randomly pick up around the world. I can go here and see what's not leveled up and enhance it because I've always been picking things up. It's better to have a lot of something you don't need or maybe need in the future than something you need a lot of, but don't. 
Number 17 is buy all your available food items whenever possible. If you buy all these items, then you can use them for later when you're about to go against a boss. And then these also regenerate over time. So that way you can just buy them all up. They can start regenerating again. You can make all your food for all the bosses you're going to fight. And then you can come back maybe a week later in real time. And then they should all be replenished. So that way you can keep the cycle going, making food, fighting bosses, buying other ingredients again, making food, fighting bosses. Number 18 is reading the tutorials. As you are exploring Tevat, you'll often find things that you don't really know what to do with. You can see here I am facing a dreadful withering and here is the tutorial for the dreadful withering. So it kind of explains how to defeat it and what it does to you. Since I figured out exactly what to do, I can actually fight this thing now. And there we go, it's gone. A number 19 tip is always have an exploration team going. So if you go to the Adventurers Guild, you can come here and dispatch a character on exposition. And this is just a passive way of getting a bunch of kind of rare items. Amber just got done with hers. Claim those after the amount of time that is required has elapsed. Now, depending what area you're going to go out on an expedition, some characters will have modifiers on them. For instance, Navia gains 25% more rewards when dispatched on a Fontaine expedition. Tip 20 is just to have fun and have patience with the game. Genshin is a game that takes a lot of patience and time. It's a game that you definitely cannot finish in a day. It's not like a game like you'd play that's a first person shooter. For instance, COD, you're done in 30 minutes with a match where this, you might be on one story mission for up to an hour. So just having patience in the game, I'm sure you'll have enjoyment. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it all the way through this video, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the content I made today, go ahead and leave that like on this video. If you have any comments or concerns or any videos you'd like to see me make, go ahead and drop that down in the comments section. But thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Darth Lion, signing off.